welcome to Cobwebs, everyone. My name is Daniel. So today it's time for my monthly wrap-up physical media show where I talk about all of the Blu-rays and 4Ks I watched over the past month and I rank them for you from my least favorite to my favorite. Now, almost everything I'm gonna talk about today is going to be spooky, but I do have a couple of non-horror movies in here as well. Now I've got 15 movies to talk to you about today and in dead last is Atma. This is a Bollywood horror film that I actually checked out in this box set that I just got from Mondo Macabro. I watched all of these movies over the past month and recently made a video about it. Thank you if you watch that. If you haven't, links in the description below. Most of those movies are older, but this one is the most recent one. It's from 2006 and it's just got a very digital 2000s feel. It almost looks like a soap opera. I just really didn't enjoy how this looked. It's got a very strange plot around a ghost haunting a guy guy who lied on the autopsy report for his body because some mobsters basically threatened him if he didn't. I don't know why this ghost is so concerned with government paperwork, but he definitely is. Whatever, that's the plot of the movie. I didn't enjoy it that much. I found the cast very generic and uh, not very interesting. Just was not a big fan at all. At number 14 is Frightmare, and I'm kind of shocked this wasn't in Dead Last when I watched it. I, I thought for sure it would be. This is not a good movie. I got this from Vinegar Syndrome. I thought I was really going to like it because what it seemed to be was an 80s slasher that takes a lot of influence from 1960s horror films with like Vincent Price and Christopher Lee because it's about a horror star from that old gothic era who is very old, he passes away, and some horror fan college students decide a great idea would be to steal his body and then throw a party weekend at Bernie's style where they prop him up in a chair and just kind of drink and party around him, which is an insane idea and it makes these characters so inaccessible like who on earth would do that it's so crazy and the horror star ends up becoming a ghost and haunting them and killing them one by one so that's when it becomes a slasher film i did like the guy who played the horror star he is a fictional character of course but he's very much supposed to be christopher lee even when they show clips from his old movies it's literally christopher lee and old christopher lee movies i thought that was kind of a bold choice but probably the most remarkable thing about it is it's got Jeffrey Combs as one of the college students. But the reality of the movie is you just watch some pretty boring death scenes. Some These college students just kind of wander around until they get killed. I thought there was some really good potential for this ghost guy to be a very intimidating presence. But he doesn't even talk, which I thought was a mistake. He just, you know, kind of just goes around and boringly kills people. I thought this movie was very, very dull, despite the fact that it's got a great slipcover, pretty cool cover art right there. It's got an alternate title called The Horror Star. This is just one of those Vinegar Syndrome blind buys that did not work out for me. Another one of the Bollywood films, this is Pirani Havali, or English title as it says here, The Monster Wakes. I really liked the monster in this movie. That's something I don't think I said enough in my video on this set, but he did look really cool. There's an awesome scene that's very Nightmare on Elm Street-like where he bursts out of a bed and pulls a woman down into the bed. Very Freddy Krueger style. But the movie itself, you know, it's two and a half hours long, most of these Bollywood horror films are. And it's the very typical formula for one of these movies, except this time it's a Haunted Mansion movie. And it just can't handle that long runtime. The characters aren't interesting enough. The comedy is like this whole side plot that's not interesting. It was just a drag at two and a half hours. But I did want to mention that the end of this movie totally rips off Dracula Has Risen From The Grave, which is one of my favorite Hammer Dracula movies. So... You know, that was kind of fun to see. At number 12 is Flesh for Frankenstein. And it kind of breaks my heart to put this this low, um, partly because it was so expensive. But this is a super fancy release from Vinegar Syndrome. As you can see, it's got this hard box that you slip off and you've got two separate slip covers for the normal 4K disc and the 3D disc because this was originally released in 3D. In my opinion, totally unnecessary. I did not need this to be this fancy. They could have easily put all the discs just in one case. And this is from the same team writer, director, most of the cast as Blood for Dracula, which is a movie I really love. Their version of Dracula, I thought was just such an interesting, satisfying version of the story. This is a much less satisfying version of a Frankenstein story because it doesn't really have a Frankenstein monster. It just has two people that get stitched together and revived that don't act like anything more than just a couple of boring people who Frankenstein is trying to mate so that they can have a baby and breed a master race for him to rule, which is 
an interesting direction to take the Frankenstein story, and I give that credit. It just doesn't end up really going anywhere, being anything particularly satisfying. And it's just so ridiculous and over the top, just trying to be as sick and twisted as possible, which I kind of respect, but ultimately didn't find that interesting. But the atmosphere of the movie and the gore, the practical effects, is actually pretty darn cool. At number 11, we're back to the Bollywood set with Bond Darwaza, or uh, Bride of the Vampire, as it's called. And this is very much the Bollywood homage to Hammer vampire movies, which I definitely enjoyed. It's got a vampire in here played by a pretty awesome giant actor who's a very intimidating presence, um, who very much functions like Christopher Lee in an old Hammer Dracula film. But he's a very cool vampire. It's got some very cool atmosphere. It's got a great setup about a woman making a deal with this vampire, like making a deal with the devil to have a child, but now the child belongs to him. It's a pretty cool premise. Again, the problem is it's two and a half hours. This one doesn't withstand that length very well. Um, now, it isn't too heavy on musical numbers or comedy because that's two things that Bollywood films pretty much always have. But it's just too repetitive. It doesn't have enough variety to the horror to not just feel like we're doing the same thing over and over again. But I did think it was pretty good. Good enough to, you know, be just outside my top 10 for the month. But in the top 10 is another vampire movie. This is Tales from the Crypt Presents Bordello of Blood. And I watched this because I'm preparing to do a video on 1990s vampire movies. So I had to see this. I've been a fan of Tales from the Crypt Presents Demon Knight for many years. And I was heard this one was pretty bad but I decided to buy it, check it out for myself. And I'm glad I did because I definitely enjoyed it. I can see why others don't like it. It's definitely messy. There's an interesting special feature on the Blu-ray that goes through the making of, and it was clearly just a very messy process, especially due to a, a certain actors not being very professional, the lead Dennis Miller more than anyone. One of my biggest problems with the movie was actually Angie Everhart as the lead vampire. Not a good performance, and the script doesn't do her any favors because because they give her so much terrible dialogue, stupid puns. Almost everything out of her mouth is like a really dumb one-liner. But when I watched the making of Angie Everhart, she comes across the best of like anyone else. She seems like she was the most friendly, professional, and everyone else was either like reclusive or a huge pain in the neck or annoying. And uh, so shout out to Angie Everhart. So she seemed like she was a good sport making this movie. It's silly, messy, kind of sleazy, but it's definitely entertaining. I had a really good time with it. Okay, at number nine, don't be mad, Young Frankenstein. So I talked about this in my Frankenstein video that I made over the last month. I knew some people would be upset because I don't love this movie. And some people definitely were, although most people were very respectful. I appreciate that. And in that video, I really tried to hammer home the point that comedy is subjective. What is funny to someone is not necessarily funny to everyone. I find most of the comedy in this movie not that funny. I'm not that big of a Mel Brooks guy. A lot of the comedy in this movie is relegated to pretty silly sex jokes and mispronouncing people's names. I just don't love it. Now, there are some jokes in this movie that I really like, particularly when the older woman yells, he was my boyfriend. I think that's like one of the funniest jokes I've ever heard. I love that part. It just cracks me up. And I love Gene Wilder's performance, just screaming through this whole movie. I love Peter Boyle's performance as the monster. I think he's very lovable. I like pretty much all the performances in this movie. The actors are not the problem. I love how it looks. It looks like a very classic Universal Frankenstein movie. Now, when it is functioning as a Frankenstein movie, now it is very familiar. We've seen it all before. If we've seen the first three Universal Frankenstein movies, nothing new here, just some jokes sprinkled in. But I like the performances. I like the look. It's a good movie that I do enjoy. It's just not a rock solid comedy classic for me personally. And uh, at number eight is a, a comedy that I, I don't know, I enjoy more. I'm sure people think I'm insane. It's The Experts. This is a movie I picked up from Kino Lorber. 1989 comedy starring John Travolta and Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston, like the, the love of my life. Well, no, other than my wife, but I love Kelly Preston. Rest in peace. And uh, so what this movie is, I, I bought this because I was, I was on a podcast with some people and they were telling me about it. And I thought the premise was amazing. It's about this town in Russia where the Russian government basically recreated an American town so they can study Americans without going to America. Seems like a lot of work for not quite enough reward, but that's what they do. But they realize that they're behind the times because it's very much a, a 1950s TV, leave it to beaver kind of town 
account and they're like, oh man, America's not really like this anymore. So they bring in some experts, a couple of kind of loser guys from the from New York City, John Travolta and this other guy whose name is Ari Gross. I think that's how you pronounce his name. They bring them in to try to, you know, teach them about America. But these guys don't actually know they're in Russia. They think they're just in some backwards small town in the Midwest. It's very funny. It's basically 80s guys trying to teach 50s guys how to be cool in 80s. And Kelly Preston is just out of this world in this movie. Like, I, I just love her. And her and John Travolta have this dance scene that is like so funny, but sexy and kind of amazing. And I mean, they, they can both dance. I mean, John Travolta, you know, he can dance, obviously. And uh, this is the movie where they met and they got married. They were married until Kelly Preston's, uh, until she passed away a few years ago. And it uh, just warms my heart, warms my heart that they, they found love on the set of this movie. And it's a movie that I quite enjoyed, even though it becomes a little bit too action thriller focused by the end. I kind of like it when it's more a comedy, but it's a good stuff. And then at number seven, back to Bollywood with Piranha Man Deer. This is the movie that kind of kicked off horror films being popular uh, for Bollywood. It was a mega hit blockbuster when it came out in 1984. Uh, it was actually the fourth highest grossing Bollywood film of its year. It very much sets the template for what all these Bollywood horror films are going to be, the ones I'm talking about here. And uh, it does a pretty good job, although not the best. So there's room for improvement for sure. But I like the monster. His name is Samari. He became a big deal in Bollywood. He was like their Freddy or Jason of the 80s and uh, definitely a scary intimidating monster and uh, I like the characters well enough but it's got too many musical numbers and it's got comedy that's a total side plot has nothing to do with the rest of the movie and all that feels kind of tiresome. I overall like musical numbers in Bollywood movies, but I thought six was too much and they weren't all winners. Staying with Bollywood at number six, we've got Takana or The Dungeon, as it says here. And this is basically a treasure hunting adventure movie where there's a monster guarding the treasure that they have to deal with. It actually reunites a lot of the cast of Piranha Mandir, which is cool, but it also adds in this guy who's basically Rambo. He's a Rambo ripoff, and I thought he was awesome. I really, really enjoyed him. And uh, this movie's much shorter. It's only two hours. It gets rid of most everything that doesn't work about these Bollywood horror movies, keeps most everything that does work, and ends up just being a tighter, more satisfying experience than a lot of them. I think this is a movie that most regular movie fans, horror fans, even if they're not into the Bollywood thing, could probably watch and enjoy. I think this is possibly the most accessible of them, if not the best, because the best is still to come. We're in the Top five, things are getting serious. We've got the horrible Dr. Hitchcock. It's horrible, horrible. This is a new Vinegar Syndrome 4K release that I just got in. I pre-ordered this bad boy. And I actually did a dedicated video on it, so you can check that out on the channel if you like. Amazing packaging here. I mean, look, you got this hard box. You slip it out. You've got this other beautiful slip cover. I mean, that's the original poster art right there. Look, this thing is just like gothic heaven on earth. Oh, God, I just love it. It's so, so cool. And the movie itself, I quite enjoyed. It's an Italian horror film from 1962 starring Barbara Steele. She's a woman who marries a man who recently lost his wife. But how he lost his wife is that he has some necrophile kind of inclinations and his main sex game that he plays with his wife is he shoots her up full of anesthetic and then they have fun in the bedroom while he pretends she's dead. Very disturbing. There's some really disturbing necrophile themes going on in this movie. I was kind of surprised that they got away with that in 1962, but I guess that's Italy for you because there's also an uh, American cut on here that cuts most of that stuff out. I didn't watch that. I don't recommend that. I think that's the stuff that makes this movie particularly interesting. But it is a gorgeous technicolor film. Most Italian Gothic films from this period are going to be black and white. You know, Black Sunday, also starring Barbara Steele. But uh, yeah, this one's gorgeous color. And I really enjoyed it. Um, maybe some people could think it's a little slow, but I was never bored. I just loved the way it looked. I thought it just a darker movie than one might expect. And uh, it's just so gothic. So, so gothic. And Vinegar Syndrome knocked it out of the park with this release. Absolutely. And at number four, we've got Tough Turf. This is a movie I bought and watched on the recommendation of Garrett from Born to be Rad. He talks about a lot of 80s, 90s movies. This is an 80s teen drama from 1985. It's very much Rebel Without a Cause. It's starring uh, James Spader basically as James Dean. He is this kind of troubled kid with kind of an affluent background, but he rejects it for the most part, who moves into this smaller town. He meets a girl who's played by Kim Richards. Very, very beautiful in this movie. He kind of falls for her, but she's got a really rough boyfriend. She's in with a rough crowd, a kind of bit some bad kids. So he's trying to romance Kim Richards while trying to deal with her pretty evil boyfriend. I just loved it because it's a teen movie 
that's really fun and it's just got great 80s vibes it's got so many 80s songs great soundtrack just i it's 80s fashions just love the vibe of it so much but it just gets so intense by the end it just builds in drama and intensity and i really like these kind of movies from the 80s these teen dramas that are fun great vibes but just get way more brutal and intense than you would ever imagine you know i compare this to the new kids which also has james spader but in the villain role in that one 80s james spader ruled this is a great time this was a sick day watch for me i actually got sick over the last month and this was the first movie i was able to watch that where i was able to like I started getting better enough where I could like pay attention to a movie I'd never seen before. And it was just the perfect movie for that vibe. At number three, we've got Virana, my favorite for sure of all of those Bollywood horror films. A witch movie from 1988 where a witch is killed at the beginning of the movie, but is able to possess the daughter of the man who kills her. It goes forward in time when that daughter is an adult and we follow her as she is possessed by this witch, seduces men, kills them. She turns into this horrific monster, amazing makeup in this movie when she kills them. It's really, really cool. But we've also got a couple of protagonists, a man and a woman who are kind of falling in love. They're really, really fun in this movie. This is also two and a half hours like a lot of those, but fills that time the best. It doesn't feel like it sidetracks. It's one trajectory. The songs work. The comedy mostly works because you've got this horror fan character in there who's always making horror movie references, which is really fun. I enjoyed Verona a whole lot. It's definitely my favorite uh, Bollywood horror film that I have yet seen. We talked about a lot of Vinegar Syndrome on this video and we're not done because my number two is my favorite vinegar syndrome that i watched over the last month and that is the devonsville terror kind of a last minute addition to my black friday sale order i, I wasn't sure if i want to get this but i ended up grabbing it and i'm really glad i did because this movie was great it's a lower budget small new england town set horror movie from 1983 that kicks off back in olden times with witch burnings where this witch is being burned but it seems like she's definitely not a bad witch though she is a witch or spooky supernatural powers in this but the men who burn her are just horrible. Then we skip forward in time to the ancestors of those men. And this new school teacher moves into town who's a very beautiful woman and a pretty progressive woman. And she really clashes with the very small town people there. But she especially clashes with the men there who are attracted to her or hitting on her and she's not reciprocating and that causes problems there. This movie really just put me into that main character's shoes so well. Um, I don't know what it's like to have creepy guys come on to you. Uh, that's not my experience. But this movie put me into her shoes so well. And I really just felt the tension of these creepy guys coming on to her and her feeling the threat of them. And as they become a bigger threat throughout this movie, as uh, her rejection of them builds their animosity for her. And it's a scary movie just from that point of view. But then it's also got witch stuff going on. It's got witch burning, witch hunting stuff. And it's a very intense, pretty frightening movie, I thought. It's actually from the same team that made a movie called The Boogeyman, The Vinegar Syndrome released on 4K. I thought that movie was decent, pretty good, but I think this is a big step up. This is one of my favorite 80s witch films for sure. But my favorite movie I watched on physical media last month, no competition, I feel like this is one of my new favorites, is Innocent Blood. This is a John Landis 1992 vampire movie that I've always known like I need to check out eventually, but I finally watched it because I'm, like I said, I'm researching for that video on 1990s vampire movies. I love this. Like, shouldn't come as a big surprise, John Landis made one of my favorite werewolf movies in American Werewolf in London. Now I feel like he might have made one of my favorite vampire movies. This is starring a French actress named Anne Paralad. I think I'm pronouncing that right, maybe. She was Nikita in the original La Femme Nikita, who is a vampire, but a vampire with a code of ethics. She will not drink innocent blood. So she goes out and tries to find bad people to drink their blood and kill them, definitively kill them to make sure they don't come back as vampires. Well, she decides to do that with a mob boss who's played by Robert Loja, but something interrupts her. She's not able to finish him off before she has to run away. And Robert Loja does become a vampire. So now we've got this movie with our good vampire teamed up with a cop who used to be undercover in Robert Loja's gang as they try to take down a mob boss who's now become a vampire and is turning his gang into other vampires. It rules. It's 
awesome. It's so fun. It's sexy. There's a great romance between this vampire woman and this cop that I, I really liked. Robert Loja is an amazing lead villain. I just love him in this time period. I mean, him in like Lost Highway. He's such a great uh, villain. And him as a vampire is just awesome. The vampire content in this is pretty incredible. I mean, when she bites people, she turns into this feral monster and just chomps at their neck. This isn't a vampire that leaves two little fang marks in your neck. This is a vampire that rips out half your throat. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. So it's just so well made. It's such a well made vampire movie, and I absolutely loved it. That's my physical media watch list over the last month, but what did you watch? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you did miss the video on that Bollywood horror set, check it out right over here, as well as a playlist of all of my other ranking my watch list videos. I've been doing this for well over a year, never missed a month, so I've got a ton of content like that over on the channel for you. Thank you so much for watching. With all that said, don't forget to enjoy yourself today, have some fun, and I'll see you next time.